Hi, this is CAD CAM Lessons channel and in this video I will show you how to create this type of part. Let's start a new project in the part workbench and add a cylinder with a radius of 20 millimeters and a height of 50 millimeters. Okay, next we will add a sphere. Let's change the position of this sphere. First, let's move this sphere along the x axis so that it sticks out a little outside the cylinder. We have one sphere here, and I would like to get more spheres. When it comes to duplicating solids, we can use the array commands. We can either use a circular array or a rectangular array. However, to do this, we need to switch to the draft workbench because it is in the draft module that we can apply the circular or rectangular array of solids. So, let's switch to the draft module. We have the solid selected. And I will also turn off the visibility of this grid so that it does not obstruct the view. So we have the solid selected and here we have the array commands. We have a rectangular array and a circular array. First let's choose the circular array and specify the number of elements here. Let's enter for example 7 and as the point relative to which this array will be executed we define point x0, y0, z0. To do this we simply click this reset point button and this point has been reset. We click OK. At this moment, if you would like to change any parameters of the array, we can do it very easily. Just select the array in the feature tree, and here we have all the parameters of this array. We have the number of elements, and can increase the number of elements. Here I changed the number to 9, and now I just need to click the left mouse button somewhere outside this field, and the number of elements has been changed. Now, since we have selected these elements, we have added a circular array. We can base on this array to add a rectangular array. In this case, we will use a linear array and add more instances, more copies of all these spheres along the z-axis. To do this, we select the array command. As for these commands, the array commands, they are also available in the modification menu, and here we have array tools. From this menu, we can also select the commands. We choose the array command, and here we specify the parameters of this array. First, we specify the number of elements in the x-axis. We don't want additional copies, so we change this to 1. In the y-axis, similarly, we don't want additional copies, so we change this to 1 as well. As for the z-axis, let's enter 5 here. Now we go to the section with intervals, and here we specify the offset value in the z-axis. I will enter 10 millimeters here. In this case, just like with the circular array, we can also change the parameters of this array later. So now I click OK and it looks like this. In this case, just as with the circular array, we can also change the parameters. For example, we can change the number of instances. And that has been applied. However, I will return here to five instances. And now it looks like this. But as for this array, this array is a combination of two arrays, a combination of a circular array and a linear array. There is also an element here on which this array was based. We can make changes to individual elements all the time. Furthermore, we can also change the position of this array. To do this, we select this array, go to the Properties Placement Position, and in the Z axis, we can move it, for example, 5 millimeters up. In this way, we got something like this. Now, for example, we can cut the sphere from this cylinder. To do this, we go back to the part workbench, select the cylinder, then hold down the control key to select all the spheres, that is, the entire array, and we choose the command to subtract one solid from another. Of course, if you want, you can use a different operation here. For example, you can combine all the solids together. In this way, we can get this type of part. Of course, the aim of this lesson was not to design this part, but on this example, I wanted to show you how to apply arrays to solids, as it is not so obvious, and you need to use a different workspace for this purpose. Using arrays of solids can be very useful in many cases. That's all for today. We will finish here. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to this channel.